As the funeral cortege moved towards the cemetery, a young boy sat quietly in the rear of the car, tears flowing freely down his cheeks. It was almost impossible for him to grasp the reality of his mother's absence. The profound sense of isolation weighed heavily upon him, as he had never experienced such solitude before. Upon reaching the cemetery, the boy walked through the assembled mourners and approached the casket that held his mother. Leading down, he tenderly kissed the lid, softly murmuring his last farewell. Then, with words that halted the funeral proceedings, he uttered something unexpected. David had an amazing bond with his mother, Haley, before she died. They did everything together. Every morning, Haley and David would go on a stroll. They would love to go to a nearby park and swing for hours. David's father was not in the picture. He left Haley just before she gave birth to David. He never tried to contact them or get to know his son. Haley hated him for that. She never imagined her son having to grow up without a father. Rose and Haley had four years between them. She was very protective of her sister being the older one. Haley could see that David loved his auntie and that they had a great bond together. So she made Rose David's godmother in her will. Rose did not know about this, but she would soon find out. Haley's death was truly a tragedy. She died way too soon and the whole community mourned for her. It was Wednesday and Haley was getting ready to drop David off at her grandparents first. She packed his bag and got herself and David dressed. She overslept that morning and was in a hurry to get everything done in time. But while Haley was making breakfast, something horrible happened. It was time to eat breakfast. She looked for David, but he wasn't in his play corner anymore. She started to panic. She searched everywhere in the house, but he was nowhere to be found. Then she noticed something. She had left the door open to the garden. How is that possible? David was still very young, way too young to walk alone outside. He couldn't have gone far. Haley thought as she put on her boots, she ran outside and started calling for David. Haley then spotted David's little head in the distance. She ran as fast as she could, not looking at the cars passing. And when she had almost reached David, tragedy struck. What she feared would happen to her son happened to her. David didn't know what was happening. His Aunt Rose was coming to pick him up and had brought him to his grandparents. He had seen police cars and an ambulance, so he was very excited. He didn't understand why everyone was so sad around him and kept asking about his mother. Rose acted strong and happy around her nephew, but she was hurting inside. She had just lost her best friend, her sister. That afternoon, the doorbell rang and Rose opened the door. Her mouth fell open. Vincent was standing opposite her and barged through the door, asking, where is my son? But David was still at his grandparents' house. Rose wondered why Vincent was so keen on seeing his son. He had never cared for David, so why did he care for him now? What do you care about David all of a sudden? You have never been a father to him in the past. You were even there when he was born, Rose said. This was the worst timing ever. She went to her grandparents' house the next day to tell them what had happened, but she heard a familiar voice when entering the house. Vincent had beaten her to it and sat on the couch in the living room. David played in front of him and smiled when he saw his auntie. He ran to her and gave her a big hug. What are you doing here, Rose? Asked Vincent as kindly as possible. She didn't want to upset David. Vincent told her a story that he had told to the parents. Rose was full with emotions. Her voice trembled. How can you lie to my parents like that? Rose tried her best to explain everything to her parents, but Vincent kept interrupting her. He denied her allegations, but her parents knew better. They have never trusted Vincent, so why would they now? Rose went to the police station the next day. She informed them about Vincent's actions and the worrying information they had gathered about him. The police explained that they needed substantial proof to take action. Accusations alone wouldn't suffice. Rose felt frustrated but understood the situation. She left the police station, hoping that Vincent would be deterred by her visit. However, shortly after returning home, the doorbell rang again. Vincent stood outside, accompanied by a police officer. Rose was taken aback. The officer informed her that they had investigated Vincent and found alarming information. It turned out he owned a car identical to the one involved in the accident that killed Haley. Rose couldn't believe what she was hearing. Vincent, the father of her sister's child, had caused her death. The police wanted Rose's assistance in apprehending him. She agreed, realizing the danger she and David had narrowly escaped. They made a plan. 
They thought if Vincent was feeling guilty, he might come to the funeral. Rose told the person in charge of the funerals so everyone knew about it. The day of the funeral came and Rose felt a mix of sadness and anticipation. During the ceremony, Rose held David while they listened to people saying nice things about Haley. It was a small gathering, but the love for Haley was strong. After the speeches, it was time to say goodbye. Rose and David, along with the others, walked up to the casket to say their final goodbyes. As they got closer, David looked worried and said something Rose couldn't understand. David got frustrated because Rose didn't get what he was saying. Rose tried to comfort him and lifted him up to see his mom better. David tried to see over the edge of the casket and Rose held him tight. She looked around for help. The person in charge of the funeral came over, wondering why David was upset. Rose explained what David had seen and the person realized it was a serious matter. They had to stop the funeral again. Rose told David they would look into it more. They waited nervously under the sun, hoping for good news. Eventually, the person in charge came back and told Rose the problem had been fixed. Rose and David went back to the casket, and now David was feeling calmer in Rose's arms. They said their last goodbyes, knowing they had paid their respects to Haley. Haley was buried in a cemetery nearby, and they put up a beautiful headstone as a way to remember her with love. After the funeral, Rose went to her parents' house to get David's things, but she realized Vincent, who was supposed to be there, didn't show up. Her parents told her they hadn't seen Vincent anywhere, and the funeral director noticed he was missing and told the police. Rose hoped she wouldn't have to deal with Vincent anymore, but not long after, the doorbell rang again. It was a police officer who told Rose they had gathered enough proof that Vincent was connected to the car that caused Haley's accident. Vincent must have felt really guilty and scared, so he ran away. The police asked Rose for her help in bringing Vincent to justice, and she agreed because she wanted to make sure David was safe. In the days that followed, Rose helped the police with their investigation. They worked together to find more evidence against Vincent. It was a tough and emotionally draining process, but Rose was determined to keep David safe. As time went on, Rose realized how important her new job as David's mom was. She really embraced it, using all the love and strength she had from her relationship with her sister. She moved into Haley's house and turned it into a warm and loving place for David. Even though there were sad times, confusion, and things they didn't expect along the way. Rose thought that she and David could find comfort and happiness together. She had promised Haley that she would be the best godmother to David, and she was determined to keep that promise with all her heart. Rose and David started a new part of their lives together. They remembered the good times they had with Haley while making new happy memories of their own. They would always carry Haley's spirit with them, and as time passed, they would feel better and do well, and their special connection would get stronger every day.